Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Run on Zwift. Today we are looking at the Zwift Companion app. This is the app that you download in addition to the main Zwift game. You download it onto your phone, your iPad, your Android, whatever it might be. It has extra functionality to hopefully give you a more enhanced and enjoyable experience within Zwift. Let me bring up my phone for you to see the main screen. Here we are, this is my little collection of fitness apps. You can see the orange app is the Zwift game and then right next to it is the blue Zwift logo with the word companion underneath. That's the one that we want. So we click that and we load up the Zwift companion app. Now, depending on whether you're running Zwift or not, the Zwift companion app will look different. So this is what it looks like when you're not running Zwift. There are various ways of getting around the app. You can use the tabs at the bottom. So if I press events, we go to upcoming events. If I press activities, these are all the activities of my friends on Zwift. We can set a goal or we can click more and there's a few other options in there. We can also access those areas by just clicking on, see the orange line which says events there with the arrow, we can click that. We will have to press the home tab at the bottom to go back. Then we press activities, takes us to the same page, press the home key to get back. Goals again. You can also look at your profile. So if you go to where your picture is at the top and your name, you can click on that, take you to your profile. Look at me. I've been on Zwift for about four years and I'm still not on the top level of cycling, level 24. Most of the people who joined at the same time as me have been on level 25 for about three years. So that shows you how much cycling I do. Um, so you can see the level that you're on within running and cycling and how many miles or kilometers you've ridden, how many pizza slices you've burned and how many meters you've climbed or feet, depending on whether you're metric or imperial. Um, you can also see how many people you're following and how many followers you have. And you can also edit the information at the top right of the screen there. If you click on that edit button, you can edit your weight uh, and your height and your country flag, whatever it is that you want to do. So we click the little back arrow again and we're back to the main home screen. Adding a goal. You can add a goal in various places within the Zwift game or on the app here. If you press add a goal, you've got an option. You can choose running or cycling. You can choose the frequency of your goal. So whether it's a monthly goal or a weekly goal and you can choose what type of goal it is. So is it a goal to get a certain distance or is it a goal to cover a certain amount of hours in a month or hours in a week? I want to cover 10 hours of running every month something like that. So you can set that goal and click add. And uh, every time you reach that goal, you'll get a big prize, a big ticker tape parade will shower over you when you're running or cycling. In the activities tab, you've got a list of all your friends, all the people that you follow on Zwift, and you can give them a ride on from here. You can check out their stats. So we can see that Shane Miller um, is currently Zwifting and he's done 44.1 kilometers in an hour and 32 minutes and he's climbed 303 meters of elevation. And a little bit further down, we can see Eric Min was Zwifting three hours ago. He did 33 kilometers and I can give him a backdated ride on for that. So if I just click on the uh, little thumb there, goes gray and that means he's got a ride on for me for that activity. Click over to events. So here we can choose any event that we want to enter. You can look about three days in advance. So I want to enter the uh, Dusk Patrol run at 1 a.m. my time. Um, it's a 60 minute run. If I click on it, I can go and have a look at more details about it. So the run is organized by Jordan Maddox and Alice Berner. And there's a group A and a group B. And the group A are fast paced. They run at 8.6 miles an hour. And group B runs slightly slower at 7.6 miles an hour. So you'd be running for one hour at 8.6 miles an hour if I join group A. So let's click to join group A. Just press the plus button there. And there we are. I've joined group A for Dusk Patrol. I can have a reminder set. So I'll get a reminder 60 minutes before, that's okay. And there I am, I'm all set. I know that I'm gonna do Dusk Patrol on Friday the 19th of October at 1 a.m. So within this section, you can join or leave any group run, any group workout that's been organized on Zwift for the next three days or so. 
Click back to home. You can see just on the top right hand corner of the screen there, there's a little 99. That means there's 99 notifications that I've missed. If one of your friends starts a run or a ride on Zwift, you will get a notification to let you know they've started and it's an invitation for you to join them or to give them a ride on or whatever it might be or just to have a look at what they're doing. So let's click out of that and go to the more tab. Find Zwifters. If you've done a run with somebody, maybe you were just running around on your own and you happen to hook up with somebody, you can find them on here and you can click them to add them as a friend. Or if you've done a group run with somebody and you want to make friends with that group because you run with them all the time, so you find their names on here and click to add them as a friend. Or you can just be nosy and just look at what they've done in the past. Settings is where you change all sorts of things about how you see Zwift and how Zwift interacts with you. So for example, uh, you can change your notification settings. So do you get a notification every time you get a new follower? Uh, do you get a notification uh, every time somebody starts riding or running? That kind of thing. So if you click connections, here's where you can connect with third party apps like Strava or Garmin Connect. It shows here, look, that I am already connected to Strava and Garmin and Withings and today's plan, but I'm not connected to Training Peaks. So if I click plus and it asks me for my Training Peaks username and password, I'd log in there. And the next time I do a run on Zwift, it will automatically upload that run to my Training Peaks profile. Profile is what you'd expect it to be. This is where we went to earlier on, where you can change your weight and your height and your country flag and whether you're viewing things in metric or imperial stats. And then if we click out of settings, the last thing we can see there is shop. If we click that, it will take us out of the Zwift companion app and to the official Zwift shop where you can buy various things um, and that will expand in the future and you'll buy all sorts of things on there, clothing and all sorts. But just be aware that when you click that, it will take you away from the Zwift companion app. So you'll need to click to get back in. And there we are. And that is your look around the Zwift companion app when you're not connected to Zwift. However, when you do connect to Zwift, the two link up together. And this is what it looks like then. So the Zwift app is now loaded. You can see it in the top right hand corner there. And I'm going to get the phone and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it down and see if it recognizes that Zwift has loaded and whether it changes screen. Sometimes it does it straight away. Sometimes you need to just give it a bit of a kick. OK, so it hasn't automatically recognized that Zwift is now loaded. Um, you do need to be on the same Wi-Fi network, by the way, for this to work. What I normally do in this situation is I will just click off, swipe. And then load it again. So here we go. Let's have a look. Load up the Zwift Companion app. And there we are, <laughs> finally loaded. What I eventually had to do there was turn Wi-Fi off and turn Wi-Fi back on again. I'd say 80% of the time, the Zwift Companion app will load straight away with no bother. However, sometimes you do need to give it a kick. So once we've got the Zwift companion app loaded and connected to the Zwift game, we get presented with this first page. This is a map of the route we are currently on and the course we're currently on. So we're on Watopia here and we're on the 5K run loop. And you can see that map here. And you can scroll around that map if you want to so you can see the seafront area and the pier. And we can zoom in and out. So there's the volcano. We can zoom into the volcano if we want to. And zoom out again. And we've got a little orange arrow to say where we are and what direction we're going in. And the little dots there are other runners. So, for example, if I press on that dot, I know that's S Donovan. Or if I move over here. T Roll. R Floyd from the USA. And you can also click on the three dots there and you go straight to their profile. Now, if I click fan view here in this person's profile, the Zwift app will take me to that rider. And there we are. So there we're now watching Brian Lassen. And then I can just click my view and I can go back to me. There we are. So uh, let's go back to the map again. Let's see if we can find a runner. So here we are on the run course and these people are in white. So let's click there and let's give them a ride on. And then let's go to fan view. And there they are. And my ride on's just popped on his head. 
and then we'll go back to me. So that's what you can do on the map. Really handy, really interesting for snooping on people. Now, if I start moving, so if I just press start on the treadmill, I think I'm connected. Yes, I am. Let's just get moving a bit. You can see that I'm not wearing a heart rate monitor, so that's the only thing that's not working. But up there, you can see that I'm moving at 18 minutes, 14 seconds per kilometer. Um, I'm doing 95 steps per minute um, and I've been traveling for 44 seconds and I've covered 0 0.04 of a kilometer, 3.3 kilometers per hour. So you've got all your stats there. Um, just above that, look, you can see a little Bluetooth icon. So you can see that we're connected via Bluetooth. And then if I click that, you can see that I'm connected with my MyRun treadmill. So it's the treadmill that's connected. If you're using a foot pod, you should see your foot pod listed up there. So you've got all sorts of controls with the app. You can click to turn around there, look at that arrow. You can give somebody an elbow or a wave or a thumbs up. Uh, you can press the hammer down. You can take a photo. Companion app would like to access your photos. OK. And then we take a photo. This little eye here, just, just next to the camera, there's an eye. This is the camera angle. Keep looking at the top right there. If I press the eye, it gives me different camera angles. You can see lower down, at the side, in the front. So you've got those different camera angles there that you can look at. Well, some of these things are remnants of cycling on Zwift, by the way. So the elbow flick is a, is a cycling thing. And uh, obviously you can ring a bell, press the hammer down. You can say, I'm toast. And you'll actually hear a voice say, I'm toast. Now, as well as the stats that you can see on the screen on the map, you can go to dashboard and there's a much clearer display of your stats. Let's just go and find another runner and um, I'll show you what else you can do. So M Taylor. There's Mr. Taylor. Click on fan view. So we're now following M Taylor and uh, what we can do if we want to, we can click message. And if I want to send a direct message to Matt Taylor. I can do. I won't, but I can do. I can also send a message to uh, anyone who's running or cycling nearby me. We go back to the map and um, we're still following M Taylor, Matt Taylor. So we'll just click back to me and that takes the screen back to me. And you can see me there in the top right hand corner. So that is the difference between the Zwift companion app when Zwift is not loaded and when it is loaded. Of course, those other options are all still there. So if we click more, you can click events and activities and goals and notifications, all the things that we looked at earlier on when we didn't have the Zwift game loaded. So when you've got the game loaded, there's just a lot more functionality. And that is it, everyone. I hope that's been a useful, in-depth look at the Zwift companion app and what you can do with it. Take care. We'll see you again for another How to Run on Zwift very soon. Bye-bye.